The Toyota RAV4 has been out for a couple of years now, and in my opinion, it's still the best all-around small SUV that you can buy. Sure, I personally like the Mazda CX-5 a little bit more, and the Honda CR-V still drives better than the RAV4. But the RAV4, with its vast number of potential configurations, its usability, its spaciousness, and its long-term reliability, is still probably the best total package, in my opinion. Recently, I had the very excellent RAV4 Prime to test, which I thought, and I said in that review, seemed to kind of negate the existence of the hybrid model. But now, I have this very excellent looking, especially in this color scheme, 2021 RAV4 Hybrid to test, which is a lot like the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross, except in every single way. So, is the hybrid actually still worth considering in a world where the Prime exists? To be honest, that answer is kind of complicated. What's going on everyone, Jax here, and today I've got a hot take, a quick video on the 2021 RAV4 Hybrid. And if you're wondering, this is in XSE trim with some choice options in case that kind of stuff matters to you. This is a hot take. I'm not going to go through all the details again. If you want to see more of the details on the way the RAV4 drives and rides and all of the sort of features and amenities that are available, I have reviews on the RAV4 Hybrid from a little over a year ago, as well as the recent review of the Toyota RAV4 Prime. So check those out in the description if you want kind of a more comprehensive look at the RAV4. What I'm kind of interested now that I have the sort of current hybrid is whether or not you should even look at the hybrid in the first place. So let's take a look at some of the variables that you might consider, such as the fact that the RAV4 Prime starts at a very reasonable $28,650, while the Prime starts at a far less reasonable $38,100 which is more, a lot more. more. Granted, the Prime comes with more standard features, which helps to offset the price somewhat, but it would take you like a lifetime to recoup the $10,000 difference in fuel savings alone. You would have to drive the Prime basically in full EV mode every single day to even begin to recoup the cost, and that kind of seems unlikely. But hold on, it's not that simple. Come on, it's clear. What's clear? The Prime is eligible for the $7,500 federal tax credit, which then brings the price down to a much more palatable $30,600, which for you math-challenged folks is only $2,000 more than the base sort of starting price of the hybrid. Now, that does change things quite a bit, especially considering, as I mentioned earlier, the Prime has more standard features. You get heated seats, LED headlights, 18-inch wheels, financed over sort of a 60-month, five-year loan, which, you know, sadly for most of us, that's kind of how you finance a car. The $2,000 difference between the two would equate to less than $50 a month on your monthly payment. And that's probably less than you spend on white chocolate mochas from Starbucks each month. <laughs> well, like many things in life, it's still not that simple. Sure, as you see it here in this really cool color scheme, the XSE trim that I have to test costs the better part of 40 grand. However, a quick search on Toyota's website for hybrid models revealed boatloads of them in the Atlanta area, hundreds of them in the southeast, and billions of them across the nation. Liar! Liar! But when I tried to search for a base model RAV4 Prime, it just said 
extremely limited in your area and it suggested I contact my local Toyota dealer. Seriously, it didn't even like let me look at it. It was just like, there's not enough. You should call someone. And who even calls people nowadays, honestly? Like, I don't want to talk to anyone on the phone. I don't like anybody enough to talk to them on the phone. Mrs. Jackson and I just text and send emojis to each other. Usually GIFs. It's pronounced GIF, okay? Just stop. So, yeah, that's a bit of a problem in terms of availability. It's also worth noting that it says that for all the RAV4 Prime models, both of them, it just says extremely limited. So to sum up, the RAV4 Hybrid is an excellent small SUV. And for under 30 grand, it's kind of virtually a no brainer. I mean, do people even still buy regular RAV4s anymore? Why would you buy a regular RAV4? Well, I, I could be wrong. You can get it really well equipped in the XLE Premium trim for about 32,600. And if you're so inclined, you can option up a RAV4 hybrid up over $41,000, and that's before you get into sort of the a la carte options list. So does the Prime make more sense, in my opinion? Well, kinda. Especially for someone like me, who drives less than 20 minutes to work. So as I said in that review, just a reminder, the link is in the description if you wanna watch that one next. I drove the Prime for most of the week on EV power alone. And when I had to take Hallie to a volleyball tournament, we made it over halfway across Atlanta before the gasoline engine even kicked on. So yeah, for me, the Prime would make more sense, especially with the available tax credits. I mean, if you could locate a Prime SE trim, you should like buy it immediately. If you're in the market, you should buy that immediately because apparently they're very hard to find. Do it. It's 42 miles of electric range and you know, kind of a decent list of standard features is impossible to ignore. And with that tax credit bringing the price within 2000, I couldn't choose the hybrid over the Prime, assuming I could find a Prime. And in case you forgot, we are debating the merits between two versions of the RAV4 which is generally excellent in every way and will last you forever. But considering the unlimited availability, as much as I like that red and black combo on the Prime that I had to test, I think I like this gray and black look even more. Seriously, is this not the best looking RAV4 that you've ever seen? I know that's a bit of a loaded question. It's not like it's the LC500 I just had, but like, come on, this is a good looking RAV4. This magnetic gray metallic and black color combo, it looks phenomenal. Well done, Toyota, well done on making this RAV4 look, you know, like, Good. I mean, hey, Toyota, can I have one like this? Like, seriously, like, Ella needs a car in a year. Can I have one like this, you know? Especially because <laughs> I can't find a Prime anywhere. You silly son. Guys, I hope you found this short video somewhat useful and hopefully some of the sort of stats presented. If you're trying to decide between a hybrid or a Prime model or a regular RAV4 because you're crazy, I don't know. I hope you found it somewhat useful. I hope it was helpful in some way. Honestly, the RAV4 in general is such a great SUV and the Prime and the hybrid versions of it are both stupendously efficient. And the hybrid powertrain is one of the best applications of that technology on the market. There's not really a loser in this situation. It's kind of a win-win. It's just the Prime's 40 miles of EV range is so compelling and so useful around town on a day-to-day -day basis and you can recharge it relatively quickly, especially if you spring for the higher trim level that has the faster onboard charger. It's just a really, really good all around daily driver SUV. I really enjoyed that Prime, but this is a great looking hybrid and it's almost as useful. And I'm not gonna pretend that there is an answer to this question. For me, if I could find it, the Prime. The red and black looks good enough, I would take the Prime but you would be completely happy with this hybrid, especially in this XSE trim. It's got some good options, whatever. I'm done talking. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, ride safe, drive safe. I will catch you in the next video. It's also getting strangely dark all of a sudden. I've been talking too long. Anyway, peace.